Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchas and welcome back to Robin Clans playthrough slash tutorial. For those of you who are interested, and I know it's at least one of you, Adel Mages will be up next. So the next video will be of Adel Mages and then I'll diversify between the two factions. However, I still wanted to continue with the Robin Clans for the time being because again they are new A and they deserve the spotlight. So that's it for the intro and now for what are we going to do actually during this winter. Well thankfully both of our regions are fairly lush and green, so Avenis in particular, despite it being winter, is still surrounded by lush green fields with plenty of carrots and cabbages and all sorts of other yummy delicious vegetables on them that apparently even grow during the winter, so we don't need to worry about Avenis at all. However, as for rough color, well it doesn't have a lot of food around it as you can see, but amusingly enough, it actually does have some food, it just isn't displayed properly, it's a small bag, nothing to be worried about. Still, however, we do need to be thinking about some things, because right now, as you can see, I'm getting 7 dust per 10. And that's only because I had a population working on dust, as you can see, if I don't have this guy over there, I do not gain this additional dust per 10. And how important is it for me to gain this dust per 10? Well, seemingly it's very important, because if you remember, in my empire plan, I did go for the economy and population uh, plan. But this, uh, and you could argue that this is pressuring us to actually use this thing and gain extra dust from our population because, as you can see, I would gain a lot of benefits from that. And this will only last for the next 6 and 10 as well. However, I sometimes feel like looking at this can be a bit of a distraction. You may be thinking, oh well, I invested in something, ergo, I have to make it pay out. That's not necessarily the best attitude. Your best attitude would be just go for the best thing you can right now. And keep in mind, this kind of empire plan was kind of a freebie to me. I don't have to make it work, instead I have to go for something that works best. So if I move this population into science instead, I would gain extra 4 science, which, considering the additional modifiers, I would gain extra 5 science, which is still not exactly all that swell, because fire science, as I can see, the cost of research right now is at 111 and will continue to go up as I click on more things. So, it is not all that impressive to have extra 4 science. Extra food is always nice, I would save up on a quite a bit of time trying to get to more population points, which is nice. However, I do not feel like it is my top priority right now and it would still take me effing whole 8 turns. If instead I work on the industry, I would save 1 turn on the gathering working on a dervish. And if I go for influence, well, I don't need influence at all, so this would be a waste. So, by going for dust, I would instead gain 8 turns per turn right now. How is that helpful? Well, it is actually fairly helpful because the way I see it, I may be losing one turn on Dervish, I may be losing three turns on population, but during this time that I'm working on the Dervish, right, I'll be gaining so much more dust that it would be in my eyes actually worth it because with this dust I can always do some other things. It might not exactly be legitimately speaking worth it. I mean, the, the amount of dust I'm going to make from this arrangement might be not enough to buy out this extra few turns of dervish construction. However, I still am willing to go for it and just wait for one more turn with the dervish. So as you can see, I'm not necessarily trying to make this empire plan work, but rather I'm tr making sure that whatever I do is the most optimal option as it stands right now. Otherwise, it would be a little bit damn wound in it. Now, as for Avni, speaking of dust, what I could do is use my dust to buy out the mill foundry, which would be actually a fairly important thing because this area has no production whatsoever. But then again, we could also argue that this city is not supposed to have a lot of production, it is supposed to grow. However, if I want to make it grow fast, I need to have the seed storage. If I want to have the seed storage fast, then I need the mill foundry. And mill foundry is a very safe bet to go for any, at any given time. And when we go into luxuries right now, still there are not too many of them up here. There are more and more slowly pouring in, but we still have time before AI actually gets to this technology. And we do want to buy them cheaply, but they will stay cheap for quite some time. As you can see, it just went 25 and the prices have only increased a little bit. So I can wait for a little bit longer before starting buying out all those sorts of resources. We still have time, although it is slowly running out. That's what I'm trying to say. So. With that being said, I'll continue working on industry production just to have the siege storage done as soon as possible and I will buy out the mill foundry. And again, after 20 turns are done, I'll immediately try to sell Nahira, which apparently is a woman! Which is something I actually didn't know this before and all of you made sure to actually point this out. Okay, now I know it's a girl. She actually kind of looks like a girl too, doesn't she? Yeah, I guess, although it's kind of a... 
tomboyish, I guess that's how it's called, isn't it? Tomboyish look, so I figured I was excused kind of, sort of, maybe? Maybe? I don't know, apparently I have difficulty staying sex apart in LS Legend. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it's a good thing it's another problem in real life, otherwise I would be in a pretty bad situation. <laughs> anyway, we're done, we're done with this technology, what do we want next? Well, there are several technologies I want to go for, unfortunately I cannot go for them all at once. So let's think about our top priorities. First, we need a good army, because we want to A, sell it, B, possibly use it against the Volters. This is what I call a good army. Kasai are incredibly useful and important considering their industry costs because of how good they hide the enemies, especially on the flatter terrain where they can literally run circles around their opponents. Very nice unit, very nice unit. However, I would still rather not try to get them because I do want to create a mercenary army later on, so this would be more of a defensive unit if anything. So what do I want to go for instead, possibly? As much as I would love to go for science, it wouldn't actually give me all that much science, and this is not something I should focus on right now, so I'll abstain from this as well. I do not really need happiness, and obviously search party, it's way too late to go for that, so I will not go for it either. I don't care about uh, tragic resources, although by getting them early, I could also sell them early, which is a fairly important point. And as you can see, I do have two sources of titanium on my area, so I could use this... Uh, advantage to actually gain an additional source of dust, which would be nice, however it's a very roundabout way of actually gaining this extra dust, and instead I could gain it in a much simpler fashion by go for going for empowerment, which is probably what I'll go for right now. Of course there is also other possibility of open pit mine, but when we have a look around we can see that I indeed have only a single luxury resource of die, and while dies are very nice and they sell for quite a lot usually, especially against human opens because dies are actually very useful if you want this extra influence, still it is not optimal to go for that, I would instead rush for empowerment first and then possibly even go for dust treasures just to have a bit more of dust income. Remember we do want to have this extra dust because we want to buy out things so we can then sell them at a bigger, better price. For this reason I will also not go for prison slaves and volunteers because we are not using this dust to buy out things, although I just did buy out a thing in Avnis, I know, but instead we are using this dust to actually buy things in the marketplace, and for that, prisoner slaves and volunteers are not entirely useful at all. Alrighty then, continuing walking in Avnis on the seed storage, summer has returned which is nice, and are they attacking my city? They are. Alright, that's a little bit ballsy and a bit stupid. I'm fine with that. So I, my hero and two militia get to absolutely annihilate two centers. Now the game does say that the enemy has the advantage, which I beg to differ, but for this reason alone I will have to go for manual battle, because obviously losing city uh, at this stage, no, not entirely something that I'm okay with at all. So what I'm going to do is simply make sure that my hero stands on this tile, because it, I will not be on lower ground and I will be still fairly far away from those centers. I'll click the ready button and while my militia are going to charge in on the enemy, my hero is going to stay where he is right now. Now, those militia, they are considered infantry even though they are riding on whatever this thing is. So, do not think that they have the charge capability or anything along those lines. No, 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 no. They, in fact, the slowest unit you can have as roving clans, aside from the, of course, mercenaries. So, what do we want to do with those... Militia. Well, while we do want to keep them on offensive, because it is possible that they may need to run around a little bit after a few turns, I do also want to make sure that they are in a bit better spot so that they can attack from better angle in the future as well. So I'll make sure that they walk in more or less this fashion, so they try to get on the high ground instead of giving them the possibility of actually staying on the low ground, which would be actually the worst. So, the first militia is probably going to die fairly quickly, it is going to be attacked by the center, and the militia are no much for the center, although the center is already damaged, but as you can see, my militia are doing way less damage than the center itself. The other center, unknowingly enough, is actually in range of attacking my hero, which means that my hero will not get to attack himself this turn, but it doesn't matter, since my militia will be able to... Right, I told it to move over that way. So it is not actually going to finish off the center, which is mildly annoying, but again, doesn't matter. We don't need this here to have health or anything along those lines. We don't need our militia to survive either. We just need the enemy not to win this battle, and this is obviously what is not going to happen right now. There's no way they can survive this battle, so I can just change the orders around, make sure that I attack and kill this guy, and this will be it. I'll lose one militia, which doesn't matter in the slightest, and the enemy, as you can see, has fallen. 
that's very nice. I have no idea why those guys attacked me, but at the very least, the buff is now cleared and my faction quest should also be cleared right now as well. My mini faction quest, that is. And I gained Titan Bones. Very nice. In fact, I might uproot my suit just to be able to activate this as well, because it's a very, very nice booster to have. Or I could sell it as well, because it's also a very expensive one. However, with... Titan Mills, I already said my reservations before, I don't want to give it to the enemy, that's the first reservation. Second, it's just one of those few resources that are just too useful to possibly think about selling. So when we have a look at it, we already know what it does, it gives us extra 50% production. Do we need it right now is the question. I'm thinking possibly, yeah. Because with this extra 50% production, we could create quite a bit of an army of Dervish units and then possibly either sell them on the marketplace or just have them roaming around and mild, uh, mildlessly. Mildlessly? What the F does mildlessly mean? Whatever. Mindlessly and kill everything that moves. I don't like either of those decisions because right now, as it stands, I am fighting against AI. So, what I can do is sell those Titan Bones. Now, in fact, this is something you could even consider doing against a human player at a stage. Why? Very simple. It's 1027. How many players will be in the second era by now? Voters, possibly. I think it is possible for the voters to get to era 2 by this point. If they play very well and they have a really good start, I think it is doable. I really think it is. So you have to be a bit cautious with the voters, but it is very unlikely. And keep in mind, even if somehow some voter player is able to get to era to be at 1027 or around this uh, time you have to keep in mind even if they did that even if they did go for imperial carnage as well they could not have possibly done this without making some sacrifices and one of those sacrifices will almost certainly be dust i do not expect to have a voter player who is also not only investing a lot of in science but also has dust that is not impossible so, with that being said, what, what I think you can do is actually go ahead and, despite what I said, sell the Titan Balls. Why? Well, it's very simple, because even if you sell them, the price will be very low, but it will actually remain low, as you can see it is right now on a minimum demand, because nobody ever bought it. And uh, the way I see it, it is actually impossible for anybody to buy it and use it as well, because while the price is fairly cheap to buy the Titan Balls, it is at the same time, you know, not useful at all. Even if you have, even if you have just one city, you need ten Titan Bones to actually use them. And as such, I don't believe that this early on, any other empire other than the Roman clans will be uh, able to use the marketplace too well. So I could sell the Titan Bones. Now, will buying out those two Titan Bones increase the demand for the Titan Bones? No. Last time I tried it, at least it did increase the demand, you need to buy out more than that. However, I'm willing to experiment a little bit on camera because A, it is possible that some things have changed, B, uh, you know, showing things to you is always better than just saying that something is true or not. Besides, again, I can be mistaken as well. Nobody's perfect and I certainly, I can guarantee this, I'm not perfect either. I'm very far away from it, in fact. So, let's have a quick look. I'm going to buy out the Titan Bones. And let's see if the demand will rise or not. The demand indeed did rise a little bit. As you can see, it is still on the lowest point, but it is now it has now risen from minus 12 to minus 7.2, which means that the price of Titan Boss has increased from 12 dust per unit to 16.9. What a nice number, by the way. Dust per unit. So now with that said, I can sell the Titan Bones for the entire amount of 67.4 dust. Now, how is, it this, uh, is this an improvement over what I was able to search for before, or is it no? Well, because people like to see things for, for your own, I'll simply reload the save and show you, so that you will not be able to argue with this at all. So, give me a second. Alright, we are back, and this is actually the exact same tent. Don't ask me why it turned into winter, but it did when I reloaded it. But as you can see, it is the exact same tent. So, I don't know why it is winter, it just is now. It doesn't really matter, however, it doesn't change anything. The army still attacked me and I still killed it and gained the Titan Bones. So, now for the final confirmation that what I said is not actually complete bollocks and it is actually true. Have a quick look at this. 10 Titan Bones, I'm gonna try to sell all of them, that's 40 dust. And if I do the trick I told you about and increase the demand by buying out the only Titan Bones that are on the market right now, I will be able to sell all of those. 67.4 and you may be thinking well you are selling two more that's true but even if i was saying just selling just 10 i'll still gain 56 dust so it is just a flat out increase to dust now the thing is you have to bear it in mind as well 
What I'm going to do is indeed sell it, because I already bought it, so, you know, I increased the demand for a reason. Didn't I? But, it is not optimal, because if we were to wait a little bit longer again, we could sell this later at an even better price. And in fact, even though I kind of wanted to demonstrate it, I think I'm not going to sell it. Because what I did is I bought, bought out those selling bows cheaply, didn't I? Because I already had a stockpile of them, and now my stockpile has grew, grown a little bit, and I didn't have to spend a lot of dust to actually get those item bones, did I? No, I did not. And the price of the item bones will remain high, because again, players will want them. I can guarantee you, players will want them. As soon as they get marketplace, and as soon as they have more cities, they'll try to buy them. But, and again, you may actually not want to give it to them, but if you are okay with that then trust me the price will skyrocket even if this doesn't matter it is actually a fairly rare resource so the price for it automatically is going to grow at a fairly nice pace so we can now just sit on what we have and then let time go by and wait for the demand to drop again and wait for this quantity to renew itself and then buy it out again or just increase the demand and sell it it's all up to us right now i'll keep the titan bones because again they are useful and i might want to haggle over the price but what I can do as well is just do the exact same thing with wine. As you can see, I'm starting to do this kind of trick. I could wait a little bit longer, but since we are getting to the point where it is possible that some players could have rushed this technology, it is usually when I start to think, okay, maybe I should start buying things out. And you may be thinking to yourself, hey, that's very inefficient right now, what you're doing, you're just buying two of them at a time. Yes, you are selling some, but you're not selling a lot. True. However, as you may be noticing, what I'm doing right here is I'm playing to my strengths. As you can see, I already have a stockpile of uh, Titan Balls, that's why I bought those. I have a st stockpile of wine, so I can buy it, so I have an even bigger, bigger stockpile of wine. I could do the same with Blood Crystal, or I could do the same with Die. Now, the reason why Die is an interesting option is because I have Die in my region. However, it is also less of an interesting option because, as such, I don't need it as much. Did it rhyme? I think it did rhyme, didn't it? Alternatively, what I could also do, and what I'm in fact going to do right now, is I'm going to buy out the Dust Orchid. Because it's an amazing resource that we do want, there is two of it already in store, it is quite expensive, but it will only gain more expensive in time. So, we can either sell it for a lot in the future, or keep it and possibly even be able to use it. And for that uh, reason alone, I'll happily go ahead and just buy it right now. And now I have Dust Orchid, which is a fairly late game resource as well. That's nice, isn't it? Of course, there are three emeralds, but... Don't bother. Right now, either, they either don't work or players don't know that they do work, so nobody's going to buy them anyway, and everybody's going to try and sell them. So investing in emeralds, that's a bad investment right there. Maybe in real life it's better, but in LSI I didn't know. So, uh, I did level up a hero. Unfortunately, I already clicked the skill tweet that I clicked, you know, because I was in a hurry last time, and now I clicked it again for no reason whatsoever, but arguably I would say that you do want to max out Woodland Forager first. Why? It's actually fairly simple when we go ahead and... Actually, wait a second, how many forest tiles do I have in the city? Only a few though. Never mind, I actually am happy with the skill I went for, because not only does it give me either the same amount of uh, industry production or just, or maybe even more, but additionally, and this thing is very useful when assigning this Wild Walkers here to new cities. And right now I'm not doing this because I need this hero in this city to create a high towers. But if I were to reassign him to a different city, then he would help me create a city much faster. For example, in Avnis, with a Wild Walkers hero, I wouldn't actually have to, you know, buy out the mill foundry or anything of the sort. I would have a lot of industry production anyway. And this would be amazing. So, can I and do I want to move population around a little bit? No, because I want to have siege storage in two tens. Alright, let's keep it as it is. Is there anything else we want to do? No, I cannot sell my heroes just yet anyway. And I cannot buy out any heroes either because of reasons. Those reasons being me just being broke. Alright, now it's summer again. Make up your mind, guy. And we get the Cask of the Wonder, Which is actually fairly worthless. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, there isn't much you can do with that. Unfortunately. But you get some kind of outcome and whatnot, and of course the story continues. And now for the next thing is gather 60 luxuries and 60 strategic resources. It has to be only one kind of resource, but you can see that this is actually a fairly extreme objective. Last time I got it, it actually took me forever and ever to complete it because 60 is a lot. And while you can relatively quickly gain 60 strategic resources, especially if you have Silex, which is why, I, as I said, Silex are very important for the roving clans, but luxuries... They tend to be a bit more rare, and trying to get enough of them can be a bit of a nightmare. Now, what it helps is if you have advanced extractors. Wait, what is that? 
I don't know. Apparently we had a battle that I was unable to participate in. Good to know. It is actually fairly good because those guys could have conquered my city here and there. Alright, anyway. What I was trying to say at the very least, but then I was rudely interrupted, is... What was I trying to say? I don't... Oh yeah, I remember now. Sometimes you get the technology that is called Advanced uh, Augmented Extractors, which increases the luxury production yield from your mines. And with that, this quest that you have right here is actually fairly manageable. And as you can see, more Titan Bones, so more power to us. Very, very nice. Exactly what we need. That's actually very lucky. But the problem is that still, regardless of this, getting to 60 uh, industry, uh, not industry, 60 luxury and strategic resources, or even of one type, I mean, especially since you have to go for one type in particular, that is very tough. We will try to get to it, but it will involve marketplace a little bit. For example, we could use it to get titanium faster, but in all actuality, this is kind of worthless because it will not help us because we have titanium, but we will still lack the luxuries that we need because we need to have 50 of those. Right now, we have no dice whatsoever. We could buy dice on the marketplace, but it's just one and it costs 10 dust right now. Not ideal, is it? Not at all. For these reasons, those reasons, it could actually be fairly decent to have a broken lot hero. Unfortunately, we have not a single broken loss to be recruited on the marketplace. But if we did, a broken loss would be very broken loss here would be fairly helpful because he works in a similar way that the Silex do. He increases the yield you get from your mines. Unfortunately, we're not lucky enough to have him. And unfortunately, again, while exploring this entire universe, we are unable to find a lot of ruins that were actually indecent. But then again. This is just my luck, being F and BS. What we are going to do, however, right now, is just create a bunch of dervishes. And while it could be a decent idea to start investing in Boros streets, in fact, it is something we have to do fairly quickly, otherwise we'll stay behind. But right now, we actually need to create some dervishes. Because without those guys, we will be fairly far behind. We need to start moving around the map, getting the quest from the minor factions, assimilating Silix. It's very important that we do this ASAP and also pacifying other villagers as quickly as possible. Now, one thing I didn't do is... Hi, Pug. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. Is I didn't retrofit those guys, and I do need to. Now, you could give them this quest item. It increases the production cost of those guys quite a bit, but it does give them extra movement. Do we need it? No, because those guys are already very fast, so what's the point of giving them that? There's, there isn't any. That's the simple answer to this. Now, their initiative is very pathetic right now already, so we can give them extra armor, make their initiative the lowest possible, but at the same time, they do have a bit more defense now, so they may actually be able to survive some kind of strike. What else do we want? We want to think about the kind of weapon. We can either go for something that gives us a warrior slayer with a block, or we can go for a knight slayer with extra damage on it, but with no block. Because those guys are so fragile, I tend to stick with the shield, even though they are useful for hit and run tactics. To execute hit and run tactics, you are supposed to survive at least one hit, aren't you? And those guys without a shield, they tend to die really quickly. So I let them have their shields, even though they are not exactly all that useful. Apply the changes, and I already have this damage almost done, so I'll keep him right there. But what I'll do next is I'll simply go away. There we go. I'll simply kill those damage as like. So I think the time it takes to create them is actually fairly similar to what it was before. So that's good. Now what you could do as well is create a damage that has no upgrades whatsoever, like this one and spam it and then sell it on the marketplace. It is something I have done in the past. It's moderately useful if you have nothing else to do in your cities, but you have to keep in mind it's something that other people uh, can benefit from and it's not the optimal way of gaining dust, is it? All right, so what do I want to do? In this city, I do want to have production, but I also want to grow population faster. So I can make uh, get extra population 110 faster, 210 faster. And that's where it stops being super optimal. So I'll do it like this. This Divish will take me an additional time to uh, produce, but the other Divishes will be there as quickly as they normally would be, so that's okay. As for Avenis, it is continuously walking. It did gain extra population, so that's nice. Can I stop walking on industry? No, I cannot. I can kind of stop walking on it. But I do want to continue working on food, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, what else do I want to do? I want to ask a hero over here. There are two reasons for this, in all honesty. One, this guy is going to increase the production by a very substantial amount, and now actually I can move all the population wherever I want. And I think I'll move one of those guys into dust, because I do want to have some extra dust. Now, the second reason for this hero being here is because there is this guy who's outside of my borders, I mean doors, and he might want to actually eat me alive. I would rather not let him, because losing a city to a neutral unit is actually fairly bad. 
And now what we could do in the future is also get those units. And usually by this point I would have enough dust to do this. That's what I did last time at the very least. Unfortunately because we were very lucky with the ruins that we explored and we didn't get a lot of luxuries. That's not where we are right now. Again, what I could do if I were in a pinch, I could increase the price of blood crystal and then sell it because I probably will not be using too much of it. But Blood Crystal actually is actually very good with mercenaries, but instead what I could do is get rid of one because that, I can tell you, I will not be using a lot. So I could buy out some one and then sell it, but I would rather keep it for, you know, times when I'm truly in need. Right now, it is just staggering me a little bit, making everything a little bit slower, but it is actually still okay and fine, and as such, I'm not in a hurry or rush to buy out anything whatsoever. Alright, Avnes is working on a public library, very good because it's a very useful thing. Afterwards, I will indeed go for the Hatters as well. It takes forever to create them for only 5 extra science, but it is still 5 extra science and extra vision isn't too bad either. Although it does take a lot of production. You know what, F that, I'm just going to go for more Dervishes. Which, as you can see, is much better because I'll be able to create 2 free Dervishes in the time it would take me to create a single high tower. And while it doesn't give me extra 5 science, those Dervishes can be sold and those Dervishes can be used in an army. And as such, I like them way more. Do you want to move this population like so? Not really, I'm not in a hurry and I do like to have some extra dust. Can I possibly get to the Silex Village without losing my Dervish? Oh, it's not ready yet? That's strange. Did I not pause this turn? I did, didn't I? Huh, that's very strange. Uh, I guess... Oh yeah, I understand my hero, that's what happened. Okay, my mistake then. I should have compensated for that. Anyway, now I do kind of think I want to move the population around a bit. Like so, so I can get those devices at a reasonably okay time. And as you can see, I'm still not going for Borough Streets. It's something that I noticed I tend to do as Roving Crowns. Delay the districts, because instead of what I like to do is create a bit of a small army first. To roam around, pacify as many manufacturers as possible, get some extra loot and whatnot. And because I also like moving those cities around, I also tend to again delay the districts a little bit because I'm just trying to figure out where I exactly want them to be. Even though it doesn't disrupt you creating districts, because keep in mind you can rearrange them and will, it just kind of feels like they are not as high of a priority with Roving Class as usual. It might be an illusion though, it might just be my inexperience with this faction, keep in mind they are still relatively new to everybody, including myself. Alrighty then, uh, what next in terms of research? Das Rivers. I think this is something I talked about before. Look at this river, it's delicious. And there are more rivers over here. Das Rivers will be useful no matter how I look at it. What they want next, I could possibly actually go for the sewer sister as well. We will need it at some point because I do want to have three, maybe four cities at this point. Sewer system become useful. What do we want after that? I do actually. I do. Go away. Go away. What the? Why can I. Did they change something? I cannot unselect it. Uh, seriously. Uh... Hmm, that, that is... Um... I can unselect everything else, but I cannot unselect the sewer systems. Well, I guess now, now I have to go for them, because I was about to say that I do need to have the extra luxuries and strategic resources, so I should actually start researching those fairly quickly, and in fact, I, will should, I do want to go for them before the sewer system, and maybe I was going to even change it so that I would get them before the dust dredger, but the, I, no matter what I hold, I cannot actually unkill those things now. A bit of a bummer, isn't it? Well, it is uh, actually it is now beta, so yeah. And oh, that's a very big army. Uh, yeah, killer. So they kill each other. They have a lot of initiative. Well, yeah, that's actually a pretty good build for a marine. That's okay though. Anything else I do want and or need to do this stand? Not exactly. I do have a devil right there. Uh, can I make it to the select village without dying? Let's have a quick look. Let's create the army. I will work like so. But there is. I was able to abuse the map mechanic. There was a unit. That, oh no, it's just the village. All right. So I can move over here and then use the trick I showed you last time to actually get there faster again. All right, I'll do it. And then I'll actually end the video cast as well because it is fairly long already and I need to upload it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was Pancho, so also known as the Mighty Mix Bummer. Thank you very much for watching. And I was about to say the last parting words, but first things first, let's talk to the villagers. What do they want? They want something that they'll give me spikes of Fidea. Very, very useless. That's actually pathetic. And make sure there are no enemies armies in rough color in 510s. So, for, for, in 510s, I'll have to make sure that 
uh, this area is clear, more or less. It does include the selects, from what I know. The village that gives you this quest doesn't care about its own f uh, units. At least that's how it used to be, maybe it was changed, but I doubt it. Because it does make sense, doesn't it? Either way, it was me, thank you for watching, and I'll see you online.